has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. A man came from Baal Shalishah, bringing to Elijah, the man of God, 20 barley, lo barley loaves made from the first fruits and fresh grain in the ear. Elijah said, give it to the people to eat. But his servant objected. How can I set this before a hundred people? Elijah insisted, give it to the people to eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and there shall be some left over. And when they had eaten, there was some left over, as the Lord had said. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all, and in all. The word of the Lord.
great prophet has risen in our midst. God has visited his people. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred days' wages worth of food will not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There is a boy here who has five belly loaves and two fish. But what good are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place. So the men reclined, about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the fragments left over, so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled twelve wicker baskets with fragments from the five belly loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come in the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends, on the day of our baptism, we became kings, prophets, and priests. Each one of us here, we are kings, we are prophets, and we are priests. That's why in the history of salvation, we see the instances of these three categories of people, the kings, the prophets, and then the priests. But in Jesus is the sum total. In him we see the summary of these three categories of people. And that's why today we can see the connection between the first reading from the second book of Kings, and then the gospel reading from the gospel of St. John. There is a theological formula that can help us to understand the readings of today, especially the first reading and the gospel reading. 
It is very simple. It said in Latin, vetro in novo, et novo in vetro. It simply means the old is found in the new, and the new is found in the old. If you listen attentively today in the first reading, we are being presented with a story of a prophet, Elisha, in Israel. We were told that a man came from Barshilisha and presented to this prophet a gift, 20 belly loaves, a gift he got from the first fruits of his harvest, which was the, the tradition during this time. When you read the book of Exodus, chapter 23, you will find that it is prescribed that every first fruit must be presented to the priest. And this man did according to the law. But then, presenting this gift to the prophet, the prophet asked him, as the servant, to use this gift and serve the people. It was described hundred of people. Hundred here is, you know, a symbol that these people were like a crowd. And then with these five twenty belly loaves, the prophet was able to feed this crowd. You can imagine, within this time, it was said the background of this feeding was that there was famine in the land. And then the prophet was able to perform this miracle. And performing this miracle is also has a significance, biblically speaking, because him, Elisha, is now the successor of another great prophet, Elijah. By performing this miracle, he established himself as a true and authentic man of God, a successor of Elijah. And then, all the more, it is a prefiguration of that which we read today in the Gospel reading. And that is Jesus feeding the multitude, the 5,000, with only five loaves and two fish. My dear friends, when we go to the gospel reading today, the feeding of the 5,000, we see in Jesus as one who came in order to restore us to our original state of holiness. And he began this not by ignoring our human needs. The gospel reading today began by saying that Jesus saw this crowd and had pity on them. And Jesus asked one of his disciples, his apostle, Philip, give them something to eat. Having listened to the word of God, Jesus saw the need now also to feed them, humanly speaking. We were told that Jesus told this in order to test the faith of the apostle. Because the important message here is not the lack of food. It's not the fact that they had only five loaves and two fish. But the important message today is faith. Faith. Because in every circumstance we find ourselves in life, Jesus is looking at us to see how deeply do we believe in him. In any condition we see ourselves, in good and in bad, when things are going well and when things are not going well, in abundance or in lack, Jesus wants us as Christians to demonstrate our faith, to exhibit our faith. When he told the apostles today to give them something to eat, and then they presented only five loaves of bread and then two fish, Jesus gave them a command, which might appear to be very stupid, in the eyes of men. And you know, the logic of God is always different from human logic. It would have appeared to be stupid for Jesus to tell the disciples to use only five loaves of bread and two fish to feed the crowd. He gave them the command, asked them to sit, and the people sat down. And then he said, distribute this to them. It required faith. It is only a man of faith who truly believes in Jesus 
that we know that with Jesus, nothing is impossible. And that's why the apostles obeyed him. Despite how stupid the commands may have appeared to be, they distributed these five loaves of bread and two fish. And at the end, we were told that there were abundance. Twelve baskets filled left over. This is the central message of today. That with Jesus in our lives, in our journey of faith, when we have Jesus and truly believe in him, whatever we may be passing through, in any condition we find ourselves, when we believe that we are with Jesus, nothing is impossible. He will lead us through. Because he came in order to restore us to our state of salvation. He came in order to give us life in abundance. He said it, I came that you may have life and have life in abundance. A Christian is a man or woman of faith. A Christian without faith in Jesus is not it. It is only when we have deepened our faith in Jesus, he will assist us in any condition we find ourselves in life. Because faith in Jesus simply means that we have abandoned our lives to him. That all our existence is controlled by him. Because he created us. And we are yearning always for him. And we are moving towards him. That our journey out of life we have is success. Only when we return back to Jesus after our sojourn here on earth. Therefore, my dear friends, the message today is very simple. It's an invitation for us to deepen our faith in Jesus in any condition we find ourselves trusting in him. Because the God in whom we serve is a God of multiplication. In God, there is no subtraction. There is no addition. It is only multiplication. It is the God of providence. He's a God that created out of nothing. He is the God that makes a way where there is no way. So in this Mass, we pray, asking God to increase our faith in whatever we are passing through in life, that he will help us to believe in him, to trust him, to abandon our existence to him. He is our maker, and he's only him who can restore us and lead us back to the Father after our existence here on earth. I believe in God, and in all things visible and invisible. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. In all things we are made for our sake and salvation, it came down from heaven and was made to heaven. Was born of God, became man. For our sake, he suffered upon his violence. He was covered there and was buried. He was in accordance with the scripture. He is carried into heaven. Since they are the right hand of God, we will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Lord Jesus, the Lord, the giver of life, who says from the Father and the Son, the Father and the Son is the Lord. Let us go to the Lord. 
prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I prepare from baptism for forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the Lord. Amen. My dear friends, Jesus wants us to trust in him alone because in him is salvation. Let us now present all our worries, our challenges, the things that make us not to have absolute trust in him. This mass is offered for M. Blue and Lydia Jonez and Andre Sicard and the repose of the soul of Dr. Virginia Paradella. For these intentions, let us continue to pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the Pilgrim Church on earth, may the Holy Spirit continue to protect her and preserve her. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those in public office, may the Lord bless their efforts to protect the dignity and the sanctity of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who hunger for God and for all who seek to provide them their daily bread, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who work to defend the lives of the unborn, the sick, the infirm, and the aged, and those who defend humanity's inalienable right to life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who protect us from natural disasters, especially from wildfires, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the commissioned Stephen ministers, caregivers in our parish community, may the light of the Holy Spirit guide them to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, the cure giver. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have died, including David White, for whom Our Lady of Grace Candle burns this week, may they be received in the merciful embrace of our God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Now for our own personal petitions, let us pause in silence. For all of these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Almighty ever-living God, we, your children, have presented before you our praise and petitions. You know our worries more than we do. We ask you, O Lord, to listen favorably to our prayers and answer us according to your will. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger, and who believe in me shall not thirst. No can come to me unless the Father beckons and I will raise you up and I will raise you up and I will raise you up that I will give is my flesh for the light of the world and if you eat of this bread you shall live forever you shall live forever 
and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up on a last day. Yes, we will believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation, through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body 
and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Spread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memory of the saving passion of your Son his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you wait to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and our Bishop, the other bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listening graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, 
we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive. But only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Behold the Lamb.
The second collection today is for the diocesan development drive, the DDD, which supports different ministries in the diocese, especially the rural missions um, and the education of seminarians. Thank you. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Andre Sicard. I'm a seminarian studying for the priesthood here in the Diocese of Salt Lake City. Uh, and I've been assigned here in St. George for the past two months for my summer assignment. The diocese sent me uh, down here. And so I just want to take this opportunity since it's my last weekend here in St. George before I head back home for a few days and then back to the seminary in Washington, DC. I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank you all so very much for your warm welcome and making me feel so at home these past two months. Um, and I guess the weather also offered me a very, very warm welcome. Um, and so I just wanted to thank you for allowing me to be as a seminarian, a part of your community, to worship with you, to pray with you, to serve with you and to celebrate with you in your different groups and ministries here uh, in the parish. And I've had the opportunity to, uh, to learn a lot in the office, to learn a lot about the groups and ministries that you have going on here. And it's been an incredible and valuable experience that I for sure will take with me for a very long time. I, uh, I'm, it was exciting to, to see all the groups and how large and growing this community is. And I'm excited to tell people about, uh, to tell people that there actually are Catholics in Southern Utah and that, uh, that they're growing and that the church is alive here and that's thanks to your witness and your faith in Jesus Christ and in our church. And I ask that you continue to pray for vocations. We have eight seminarians, which is sort of, I mean, it's a high number for us, but it's a low number. So I ask that you continue praying for vocations. I know that uh, I was impressed with how dedicated this parish is in praying the diocesan prayer for vocations regularly. And so I ask that you continue to pray for more vocations and invite your children, your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, your neighbors, any young adults that you know to consider saying yes to the Lord and praying about following him uh, in priesthood or in religious and consecrated life. And I ask that you continue to pray for me. I'll start my seventh year of seminary um, and my third year of theology studies in Washington, D.C. at the Catholic University of America. And so know that I'll be praying for you. And I am so, so grateful to Father Dave, uh, Father Kalechi, Father Dare, Father Joe, that I've known for the past two weeks, all the deacons, the parish staff, and all of you for making me feel at home. And I hope that one day I'll come back uh, and visit. Hopefully next year I'll be ordained a deacon, so hopefully I'll come down as a deacon and in two years as a priest to celebrate Mass with you and to, um, yeah, to just offer again my thanks for your prayer and your support. Um, yeah, know that I'll be praying for you and I'll be carrying you in my heart. Thank you so much. Let us pray. We have consumed, O oh Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Before the final blessing, I was asked by Father Dave to remind you of the religious education sign up after Mass in the vestibule. Happy Sunday, everyone. Happy Sunday, Father. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Our sending forth hymn is Lead Me, Lord. Both verses. Blessed are the poor in spirit, longing for the Lord. For God's coming kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are the sorrowing.
rain or they shall be consoled and the meek shall come to rule the world lead me lord lead me lord by the light of truth to see Blessed are the merciful, for mercy shall be theirs. And the pure in heart shall see their God. Blessed are they whose hunger only holiness can fill. For I say they shall be satisfied. Lead me, Lord, lead me, Lord, by the light of truth to seek and to find the narrow way. Be my way, be my truth, be my Today and lead me, Lord, today.